I'm here to assist you with all your test equipment needs, from multimeters and test weights to patient simulators and x-ray analyzers. If you need guidance or you have any questions, please don't hesitate to write me at jbarber at bcgroupinternational.com. What's up everyone? Welcome back to Better Biomed. Today is going to be a simple little video and we're going to talk about wire crimps and what you might be doing wrong because I, I know I did it wrong for a long time and uh, the fact of the matter is, is I'm still seeing this even on industrial electronics. I'm still seeing people do the wrong thing. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right folks, this is a control system to a quarter of a million dollar pharmacy robot and uh, I'm just harvesting some parts off it, you know, like that TDK Lambda power supply. That guy's definitely getting salvaged. And uh, some of these breakers right here, they're going to get salvaged because they're in fantastic condition. Yet to decide on that motherboard. But as I'm pulling off these connectors, a couple of the wires just popped right out of their spade connectors. You see that? They just popped right out. And this is a pretty common problem with crimp connectors. And this one here, I can tell that they use a ratcheting style or it, it appears like that, but maybe the wrong size because if you look at the indents. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at a typical set of crimps and pliers. I got a couple of them set up right here for y'all. Sorry for the shaky cam. So this is a very nice, robust set of electrician's crimps. Typical set of wire strippers with the same style indent type of wire crimp. You see the same thing here. This is a very typical style that you guys have probably used for years. Notice how it's in different sizes. So if you're using the wrong size, you'll get the wrong crimp. Actually, see right here, they have the gauges written in next to the crimp. So what is it that people are doing wrong? If you see a regular wire crimp, they have a little indent. And what a lot of people do, and I, trust me, I did this myself for many years. So when you feed the wire in, a lot of people want to place the indent towards the indent of the pliers. See that? When you crimp it down, what happens is one side almost always crimps further than the other side, and you can usually just pull that guy off. Now, I got some pretty strong hands, and I just crimped the hell out of it. But the better way to handle this is when you put your wire into the crimp, make sure that it is inverse of your pliers. As you can see right there, I'm actually crimping on the opposite side of that little slit. What it does is it squishes the wire to both sides and it fills it in much better. There are no spaces, no cavities, no hot spots that are going to happen here versus over here. You can see that there are some cavities and it starts splitting the connector apart versus this one here where I did it on the back side it actually squished it tighter together. When you have spaces, that's when you have wires expanding, contracting, because that's thermally what happens when you put amperes through wires, they, they get warm, they'll work themselves loose and you'll get connectors that are falling off like you just seen over there at that control center. This one over here, this is crimped pretty good. There are no spaces in there. And it's a very secure, connection. It ain't going nowhere. So just think about that from now on. When you pick up a connector, take a look. There's always a little slit in there. Just orient that slit to be opposite of the indent for the crimp of your pliers. See that? So it's going to be crimping on the back side. So you push your wire in. Like so you crimp it down gets rid of all that space and you have a very tight crimp. 
All right, folks, that's just a little quick one over to show you guys a little bit about how to use wire crimps to use them maybe better than what you're traditionally doing. This is the rationing style crimp. This one right here does very good. Just got to make sure you place it in the correct placement and on the correct size. Let's strip this guy out. Let's put him in the connector. And when you ratchet this guy down, it's going to be already gauged how much crimp needs to happen. You can see how tight that is. Ratcheting crimps are just some of the best you can get. The me mechanical advantage that you're getting out of those is way greater than what you're getting out of regular hand grips. They're a little bit heavier and they don't have a wire strip option. So if you're a field technician, I completely understand it. Trust me, I've done it myself for years. These type of connectors, these pliers here, they're just a standard. And that's because you can do more than one thing with them and they don't take up too much weight in your bag. Now, if you're an electrician, this style right here is the ones that really kind of squish the fibers off to the sides and you'll get bad crimps. So if you're gonna use them, use them correctly, orient the little bump on the opposite side of the slit in your connector and you'll get a fantastic crimp every single time. All right, folks, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so drop a comment below with what you'd like to see in future videos.